What's up, guys? I'm Dave. This is my channel, X and O's TV, and today we're looking at James Robinson. So, James is the running back for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and he's really, really good. Um, currently, he's on pace to smash the record for most yards from scrimmage by an undrafted rookie free agent. So, that's pretty impressive. And I also want to talk about what I think this means for the NFL, because for the past decade or so, the running back market has been in a pretty steep decline, and I think with the success of James, I think that trend is just, just going to continue even more. Um, but we're going to go to the film first in three. Okay, so the first play I'm going to show you guys is a simple inside zone, and the reason I want to show this first is because I have to explain to people who don't know what a deuce block is. It's the most popular blocking concept in the NFL because, simply put, it's the most effective way to run the ball out of out of the gun in 11 personnel. So, what you have, what a deuce block is, is you have a double team on the D tackle, two linemen double team him, and then once he's secured, one lineman breaks off and gets to the linebacker, just like the play art shows. So you have, the reason I picked this play is because you have two in the same play, which doesn't always happen, and you get a good example of a good deuce block and a bad deuce block, right? So James, James' job is to read the blocks and, and basically see where they go. Whoever wins their block is the way, the way he's going to go and who he's going to follow. So here you can see that the guy on the left, the two guys on the left don't really have the D-tackle secured, where the guys on the right do. They're in really good position, shoulder to shoulder, and they're driving him back. So if James wanted to cut up here, he'd probably put his head down and get a couple of yards, but he's not going to do that. So he's going to keep widening this arc out and keep forcing this play to the outside here and letting his blockers get position and let the blocks develop, basically. And what happens is that gives them enough time to pass that guy off, that D-tackle off, so 66 can hold on to him. And now number 60 is going to get to the second level and secure that linebacker. So now James has another read. And this is all really fast, like split-second stuff, but it's really impressive. So he's going to read, can I go outside here or should I cut it up inside? Well, since 93 has pretty much outside leverage on number 60 it would be best to cut it up and that's exactly what James does he cuts it up here puts his head down drags some small guys with him it's a really good play but the whole point was I wanted to show you what a deuce block is because it's very very important again we have another inside zone play here I'm, like I said it's their bread and butter they love running it and James is excellent at it so you're going to motion a tight end over to block the edge rusher and you're going to have a deuce block again now, the play is supposed to go between the tight end and the deuce block, but the problem is this is not just any edge rusher. This is Joey Bosa, who gets paid like hundreds of millions of dollars to destroy offensive tackles, and this is not an offensive tackle. It's a, it's a, it's a big wide receiver, basically. So he's going to get shoved inside, and he's going to blow up this entire play. Now, fortunately for the Jags, uh, their wide receiver has a really good block and seal on the safety. James is going to see that. He's going to bounce it to the outside, and now he is 1v1 against a cornerback who's not known for his tackling ability. James is going to give him like a little spin move here, break the tackle, and, and pick up a first down. And it's just another example of him using his patience and vision and his ability to break tackles at the second level. So we got another inside zone here, except this time it's under center. Uh, same concept, though. You're going to have a deuce block on the left between the guard and the center here. And basically the difference on this play is just how James uses his vision and patience to kind of set up these blocks, which is very important. That's what separates him from the rest of the backs. That's what makes him so effective. Um... What's going to happen is they're going to really drive this guy out and get a really good block on him. And now 69's already looking at the linebacker like, dude, where are you going to go, right? So now James has a huge hole on the right. The only issue is not only does James know he has a huge hole, 
but so does the defense, right? And they're going to pursue that and try to fill that gap as quickly as possible. So what James is going to do is he's going to kind of fake like he's going inside, and then he's going to explode to the outside, get square to the line, drag some guys again, and get another 10, 12 yards. It's, it's really well done. So this is an outside zone instead of an inside zone. So, it, But it's very similar to the inside zone where you have the deuce block here. It's dependent on these linemen getting to the second level. Except what's different is James', is, uh, James trajectory is actually outside in instead of inside out. But he's still going to have a two-way go here. This is it right here. It just depends on what side this linebacker takes and, and whether or not he gets blocked. But I think he could have went outside here, but he decides to go inside. And this is what he's best at. He's best at getting square, putting his head down, and dragging small guys. Okay, so the next play I want to show is out of the eye formation. This just kind of takes me back to when I was a kid. That's why I wanted to show it. When I was younger, man, we would run this play all game long. This is just a halfback dive. And what you're going to have is the guard and the center double team that nose tackle. And their goal is to drive him back into the lap of the linebacker. And then you're going to have an ISO block from the fullback onto the linebacker on the left. And it's just who's tougher. That's it. Everyone's 1v1 except the guys in the middle. And whoever's tougher wins. And James just uses his patience and his vision to see the crease, explode through it, put his head down, and again, just dragging some small guys. Uh, it's just really nice to see. So this next play is real similar to the last play. It's a power play. They're going to motion this tight end in the backfield, sort of like he's a fullback, and his job is to kick out the defensive end. And they're also going to have a pulling guard. But everyone else their job is to wash their man down to the right and what this does is it leaves a, basically a gaping hole where the guard can go through and James can follow that guard but plays don't always work out the way you design them and what happens is the tight end ends up getting manhandled at the point of attack and the collision between the two ends up in the lap of the pulling guard and the pulling guard's gonna f fall right on his face here it's actually pretty funny but this all kind of works out in the Jaguars favor because it redirected James Robinson so everyone was expecting him outside and now he has a straight shot to the end zone all he has to do is explode through a couple arm tackles and he's gonna score a touchdown so it ended up working in his favor Okay, so for this next play, James had been gashing the Chargers specifically up the middle pretty much all game long. So the Chargers are going to call a run blitz with their linebackers coming up the middle. But the the Jaguars had called a zone run to the left with, with their wide receiver kind of lead blocking to the outside. What happens here is James, as soon as he gets the ball, he recognizes the blitz. He's just going to bounce it and follow his wide receiver to the outside. Now he's got a two-on-two, two, right? His wide receiver and him against the corner and the safety. So he's going to kind of set up that block by making it look like he's going to the outside and then quickly cut up off the ass of the wide receiver. Once he does that, he has a one-on-one -on -one against his safety. This guy is really, really hard to bring down in the open field. He's strong. He's fast. He just absolutely murders this dude. And that's what happens if you're a good running back. You make the defense pay if they pick the wrong play. Okay, so this next play is a counter play. It's all designed to make it look like it's going to the right-hand side. You got window dressing from the wide receiver. You got a kick-out block from the tight end but it's actually going to the left. So James, what really impresses me about him is he could simply just get upfield right here and get like, I don't know, five or six yards, right? But instead, he sees the opportunity for even more yards, a bigger play, right? So he's going to bounce this all the way to the outside here. And instead of picking up only a couple of yards, he ends up picking like eight or ten yards up and it's just really impressive he even makes this guy miss by jumping over him just what separates him from the rest of the running backs 
So we broke down what makes James Robinson a special runner, but I also want to go over how complete of a back he actually is. So I made this list here. Um, it's not in any particular order, but we pretty much went over numbers three, four, and five. Now I want to talk about numbers one and two, which are pretty much just, they're pretty much as important if you want to be a third down back in the NFL. So now James isn't the best at any one of those things, but he's great at, at all of them. Um, the number one skill that an NFL running back needs in a passing league today is the ability to pass protect. If James couldn't pass pro, the team would risk their most valuable asset, which is the quarterback, to potential injury. Now, fortunately, James isn't afraid to get squared and stick his face into a blitzing linebacker's chest. And it's really impressive because that's what most backs struggle with when they come from college. So in his rookie year, the fact that he's so effective at pass pro is really impressive. Now, James can also pick up yards through the air. Honestly, most of the routes he runs are just simple check downs. He's not like an all-world receiver, a Le'Veon Bell in his prime, but he has shown really good hands. And once he's in the open field, just like when he's carrying the football, he's very dangerous in the second level. So, James Robinson is currently on a three-year contract for a little over 700 k per year. That's a steal for Jacksonville, who, who can now focus on putting their money towards a quarterback or their suspect defense. I think this team will be scary next year if they can get a franchise quarterback in the draft, honestly. If James is the perfect running back for a rebuild because of his price, his production, and most importantly, his durability. I believe this is where the league will continue the trend towards, not necessarily undrafted players because... Let's face it, it's pretty rare to see this sort of production from one, but I think teams will look further and deeper in the draft to try and save as much money as possible at the position. The team who gets lucky enough to secure a three down back for cheap has a huge advantage over other teams who choose to spend big money on the position. I'm not saying all running backs are replaceable. Obviously, Derrick Henry and backs like him are incredible. I just think teams will start to look for the next James Robinson instead of the next Zeke Elliott. The next team who can secure a running back with similar production as James Robinson while paying practically nothing can build a dominant roster and become one of the best teams in the league.